Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Leader Sound series. I'm Shreyan, and today we have with us a public speaker, media spokesperson, and an award-winning thought leader, Bushan Sethi. Bushan is a joint global leader of PwC's people and organization practice, where he shapes and drives the firm's global network strategy in over 150 countries, delivering standalone and integrated solutions across strategy management, technology, and tax consulting disciplines. He has recently been appointed as an adjunct professor for the NYU Stern School of Business, where he shares his pragmatic consulting experience with the current MBA students. He's also an award-winning thought leader and influencer on the future of work, and has also been recognized as one of the most inclusive HR influencers in 2019. We're extremely honored to have him here with us today. Welcome, Bushan. Thank you, Shri. I'm delighted to be here. So to begin with, Bushan, you've had, you have experience in some of the world's top organizations. Can you tell us about your journey and some highlights in your career? Yeah, um, I've been very fortunate to be in really good organizations and have really good mentors. I remember my first job working for a company in Nottingham on their management, their graduate training scheme, moving around internal consulting, finance, management, accounting, working with really good people, really understanding how to analyze business problems, develop reports, think about the context of who your customers are, how you create value. Um, and I've been, you know, I've been consulting for the best part of probably 25 years, um, different forms of consulting, um, working on mergers and acquisitions, regulatory changes, technology transformations, um, cost reduction programs, growth strategies. So, and I've worked in lots of different industries. I've been specializing in financial services, probably for the best part of the last 10 to 15 years. Um, and I've been living in New York for 21 years and I have a global role. I love kind of meeting global colleagues and working with clients globally. I, I, but I live in, I live in New York. Wow. That's truly inspiring, Bushan. You sound like you had a great career and, you know, you've uh, also mentioned that one of your expertise is the future of work. So in the last few years, we see many organizations, you know, how to transform their business to keep up with the changing trends. How can the leaders of today work towards achieving a successful business transformation? Yeah, leadership's leadership's so important. We've seen this through the pandemic, the role of leaders to um, drive the productivity of their teams, the engagement, the morale, giving them a voice on social issues. We've seen leadership like never before be so, so important. And all of us, whether we feel that we're a skilled leader or not, have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn on how to be inclusive. We have a lot to learn on how we got to redesign work so that work can actually be driving more flexibility for people. We've got to reinvent how we think about revenue now in this high inflation um, environment. How do we take out costs and automate work responsibly? How do we bring people along? Um, so there's a big, big role for leaders as they think about the future of work. But I think it starts with humbly you know, being being around good people, asking good questions, being curious, being inclusive. But as you mentioned, kind of the future of work, leaders have to be futurists. They have to scenario model. They have to think about new business models. How do we create revenue? How do we think about product launches? Will our people and our stakeholders buy into this? So leaders have to lean into all of the human aspects of leadership, but also redesigning work and thinking about their future business. Oh, definitely. I completely agree with you on that one about how leaders should be futurists so we can anticipate and, you know, work towards building a better future. But you also mentioned of uh, having an inclusive environment. So and in one of your articles, you said that corporate well-being initiatives should be personalized in today's evolving business. So according to you, what are some practices that leaders can implement to personalize an employee's experience and also establish a sense of trust between them and the organization? Trust is so important um, between leaders and their teams. Um, trust is really important between an employer and an employee in terms of if you don't let people be their authentic self, if you don't give them safe space to share issues and concerns, um, if you don't engage with them around what's going on that's maybe affecting their productivity, it could be something going on in the wider, in the wider world. It could be something in their personal life. And again, we're not asking leaders to be um, psycho psychologists we're not asking them to be therapists but we are asking them to be human and so kind of having leaders take a personalized approach to say Shreyan how are you doing today 
Um, what, you know, how can we make your productivity better? Is there something that we can give you in terms of flexibility of schedule? Um, is there some training that we can give you? Is there, are the tools not working? Um, is there a ways that we can drive better collaboration across teams? And so the approach around your own well-being and productivity may be different to one of your colleagues. It may even be different for you at different stages of your life, as you form families, as you think about, you know, rising in your career. And so we see taking a personalized approach and really looking at data to say all humans have different needs. And just like we personalize an approach when we market a product and a service as businesses, if we don't take that personalized approach to our employees, then you know one size one size doesn't fit all, and and we'll, we're actually leaving ideas and intellectual capital and productivity on the table. Wow, that's truly inspiring, Bashan. I really like this approach to making the workplace more inclusive for employees. And in this stage of digitalization, we are also seeing a new era of employees who are joining the workforce. So how can we as leaders create a more inclusive workspace for the remote and the hybrid employees? To do that, you need to be very deliberate. First of all, you've got to acknowledge that the experience of someone working 10,000 miles away or even 10 miles away while you're all in the conference room and you're ideating you know, at the whiteboard like I am today in a conference room, um, that that experience is different. And you have to be deliberate. If your firm has made a commitment to hybrid work and wants to drive inclusivity there and give more people an opportunity to work or have flexibility in their work life, then you have to be deliberate about including everyone, including all the voices, making people feel part of decisions, make, making people feel part of, of meetings, making sure that, um, that you're not having proximity bias and building affirmation and friendship and close relationships with people just who you see in the physical office or you happen to to take out for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and so that's that's really important to be intentional and what that doesn't mean is that work can't be fun and the office can't be an engaging experience it doesn't mean that we all come back to the office and are on kind of video conference calls the office the return to office has to be a fun, engaging experience, especially around social human connection, which I think everyone has craved for the last two years. Um, but we've got to be deliberate about making sure that everyone's included. And hybrid is just the latest example of where leaders have to flex new muscles. It's difficult, but, you, but you've got to make a commitment to it as a firm. Um, and the other thing leaders need to do is working with their human resource leaders to make sure as you start thinking about promotions and succession planning, and compensation that we are not driving inequity and unintentional bias for those people who spend more time in the office. Well, that's truly a great approach, Bushan. I completely agree with you on that one. So Bushan, you've had diverse experience and for the last 25 years, and you've seen a lot in the last in your 25 years of experience. So do you have any advice for the emerging leaders that are on our platform today? Yeah, so we've talked about kind of the role of leaders and being being super transparent and leaning into this uncertainty. My encouragement for people at the start of their career, rank and file employees, is this is your moment to lean in as well. Leaders do not have a playbook for what we're going through. Many leaders and many employees were not working during the Great Recession of 08, during the the dot the dot uh, during the dot com um, bubble bu uh, bursting in 02. And so, and we've all got kind of lots of lessons learned from that. And so the more that you can actually push your organization to say, how can I be part of that solution? How can we co-create thinking about different revenue models? How can we ideate and think about innovative ways to change the way we work? How can we better use technology? If we're doing some M&A work, if we're doing into merger and integration work, how can I lean in and be part of an integration team? How can I help you with due diligence? And so the, I think leaders are craving for their teams to raise their hand to say, I want to contribute in a different way. You've obviously got to free up your time to do that because well-being and workloads need to be well managed. But the more you can actually push your leaders to say, I'm really committed to this place. I'm really committed to helping through scenario plans. I really want to understand whether it's on the revenue side, the product side, the people side, the tech side. I want to be part of this solution. How can I help? And so just be very deliberate and intentional about kind of putting your thoughts out there. Join a task force, ask to present on something, do some competitive analysis, bring some ideas to your supervisor or your teams um, and, and raise your hand. And then the second thing I would say is 
keep very, very current. Um, understand emerging technology. If you work in banking, understand digital currencies. If you work in consumer retail, understand the metaverse and understand what changes that might create to work. And so really kind of be intentional about understanding all of the emerging trends out there, what your competitors are doing, be really current and bring that back into your own organization. It will help your personal brand. It will help your firm and it will inspire others around you. Oh, that's very true, Vishwan. We must keep on, uh, keep up with the, you know, current trends. And so we can at least, while we can't predict the future, we can at least estimate a bit, you know, to work towards a better future. And I'm sure that'll inspire the emerging leaders on our platform to, you know, uh, push and take a uh, push and take a step, a step for themselves. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely, that. and and your platform's a great start. There's a lot of great content out there that people can people can look can look at and diverse content. Yeah, well. definitely. That is the goal of leaders. We want to spread our knowledge to, you know, those who need it in different in the different fields, no matter what field they're in. So uh, to finish this off, do you have any final anecdotes for our viewers? We're in a very uncertain economic environment here. You know, as I sit in the US, we're at 9% inflation, but the labor markets are really strong. It's this paradox. Um, we've got labor markets really strong in the US of you know 3.6% unemployment. Um, we hear talk globally of downturns and recessions and stagflation and lower growth. And so my advice to to leaders and anyone in an organization is we've got to lean into this uncertainty and what and what do we want in uncertainty is we want as much transparency as you can possibly give so really engaging your team to say i haven't figured out all the answers no one can predict the future of work no one can predict you know what's going to really happen around digital currency or the blockchain or when will supply chain issues abate when will the terrible war in ukraine be over but what we can do is we can be really transparent on our business and how we're going to make decisions and how we're going to make, if we need to make tough decisions about cost reduction that impacts employees, how are we going to make that in a humane way? Are we going to give people a choice? Um, are we going to give people extended time to look for other roles? Are we going to invest in their reskilling on as part of severance? So, you know, having lived and worked through a few different recessions in 02 and 08, there's a lot of lessons learned there and there's a lot of scar tissue that a lot of organizations and leaders have. And so my advice is be super transparent as much as you can, be very engaging and human back to the personalized approach and just lean into the uncertainty. And you know, one of our surveys we did on the future of work late last year basically said, there's a dividend for those firms that are deliberate about their scenario planning. There's a dividend that those firms are actually invested in thinking about the future of their business and scenario planning and thinking about the impact of revenue, the impact of technology, the impact of um, inflation and interest rates and bringing together all the stakeholders from the business, from finance, from real estate and from human resources and engaging in that planning process that actually puts your business in a, in a, be in a better place. And then you can actually think about kind of, you know, how you lead in that environment. So be deliberate, be planning, be human and be transparent. Wow. That's truly inspiring, Vishra. I really like how you summarize those last four points for us. I'm sure, like, I'm sure that'll really inspire the young leaders on our platform to, you know, work towards a better future. Thank you for sharing that insightful, insightful content with us. Thank you. It was great. Thank you very much. So, thank you for joining our series, Vishra. It was a pleasure. And that's it from our side. This is the Leaders Arm series. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.